In this video we will be looking at how to insert an in-text citation for web pages and other sources from the web. Firstly we will want to make sure that the References tab has been selected and that the style is APA 6 edition. Let's have a look at the Add a New Source options for web pages. The first option we have is Website, which we would generally use if we were going to use information directly from a web page. We also have Document from a website, which we can use for PDFs, podcasts and vodcasts such as YouTube. For blog posts, wikis, social media, including Facebook, I'd actually recommend using an article in a periodical because this actually produces the best APA type citation. If I was using images, I would probably use the type of source as art. There is another option which is electronic source, but I've actually found no real advantage to using this type of source for web resources. So in our current example we're going to have a look at inserting a citation which we've already added which is from Hand Hygiene Australia. Let's have a look at the edit source so we can see what information has been included here. So we've chosen website for this because it's from a web page it didn't have a personal author, but it does have a corporate author, which is Hand Hygiene Australia. We'd include the name of the web page here, and you'll notice I've actually capitalised the entire title here, mainly because National Hand Hygiene Initiative is the name of a particular project or undertaking, and it can actually be reduced to its initials as well. The name of the website can be useful to include here, particularly if you want to include um, or identify the publisher. But because the publisher here is essentially Hand Hygiene Australia, it's, it's not needed to be included here as well. You need to include the year of publication, if you can find it, because it can be difficult on websites to locate uh, a year. Have a look for the copyright date or possibly the last update date which is generally included at the bottom of the page for most web pages. And lastly we need to include the URL for that particular web page. You'll notice we haven't included information here for the year accessed, the month accessed or the day accessed. This information is really only necessary if it's the type of web page which we would expect to be updated on a regular basis, such as a wiki, such as Wikipedia. So, looking at our in-text citation, because we've actually used Hand Hygiene Australia within our sentence here, it's actually redundant to include it twice here in our citation, so we're going to edit the citation now and suppress the author. Just make sure that you suppress the title as well, because that will be the next choice. Now we have also included a direct quotation here. A website or a web page, of course, doesn't actually have pagination. So for websites, if you want to direct the reader to the actual paragraph, you would choose to include para, full stop, and then the number of the paragraph where the information appears. Now you'll note here that this does cause a little bit of confusion because Word will automatically insert the the page P full stop here. So if we want to actually edit this citation, the only way to do that is to actually convert it to the citation to static text. So if we select this, we're now able to edit this information as if it was just text that we had just typed in. Now that does have some ramifications, you'll need to be aware of that. When you come to do your reference list, let's have a look at the Manage Sources for example. Here's our Hand Hygiene Australia reference. You'll notice that it is no longer ticked as a cited source. 
That may be important when you come to do a reference list. You'll just need to make sure that the Hand Hygiene Australia is actually included in the reference list. We'll go over that in more detail in a later video.